Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live in a dark, misty world? A place where there were no colors and everything was black and gray. Such a life would certainly be a great torment for human beings. But the world is actually very colorful. In this film, we will be looking at one of the greatest blessings that Allah has created for human beings and his artistry of color in the world. Allah's artistry in color. All parts of the world have been created in harmony and decorated with beautiful flowers. Green forests, blue lakes, majestic mountains, and boundless oceans. Now, let's see how colors, one of the greatest miracles of creation, actually came to be. For colors to come into being, the first precondition is light, and the only light that reaches the earth comes from the sun. In the Quran, Allah draws our attention to the sun and its light in these words. By the sun and its morning brightness. When we examine the sun's light, we see that it, like everything else in the universe, is created in a very delicate balance so as to make human life possible. The stars and other sources of light in the universe emit various light rays that can be classed according to the length and frequency of their waves. The full range of radiation waves in the universe, known as the electromagnetic spectrum, have a width where the longest wavelength is 10 to the power of 25 times larger than the shortest. The electromagnetic energy radiated by our sun is restricted to a very narrow section of the spectrum. 70% of the sun's radiation has wavelengths between 0.3 and 1.50 microns. In order to see what a huge number the range of the electromagnetic spectrum is, you have to put 25 zeros after the one. This number is beyond the ability of human beings to imagine. And that is how many different kinds of light there are in the universe. Within so many kinds of light, there is only one minuscule band of wavelengths that allows human beings to survive and see colors. And the wavelengths of the rays emitted by the sun lie within this narrow interval. This fact proves that Allah has created the world, human beings, colors, and the sun in a particular harmony. In one verse of the Quran, Allah commands, He has made the sun and moon subservient, each one running until a specified time. That is Allah, your Lord.
The rays in the area immediately above and below visible light come to the Earth as infrared and ultraviolet rays. Infrared rays give off rays that make the world suitable for living things. And some ultraviolet rays can pass through the atmosphere in just the right quantity to provide the energy needed by living things. Some of the sun's rays are dangerous for living things. To neutralize this danger, our world is surrounded by an immense filter. This filter is the atmosphere. The atmosphere can be regarded as indispensable for the survival of living things. It allows infrared rays to pass through and keeps out the other deadly rays. Michael Denton describes this as follows. Even the atmospheric gases themselves absorb electromagnetic radiation very strongly in these regions of the spectrum immediately on either side of the visible and near infrared. Note that the only region of the spectrum allowed to pass through the atmosphere over the entire range of electromagnetic radiation from radio to gamma rays is the exceedingly narrow band including the visible and near infrared. Virtually no gamma, X, ultraviolet, far infrared and microwave radiation reaches the surface of the earth. Light reaches the earth after passing through the atmosphere at an incredible speed of 300,000 kilometers a second. It strikes material things and splits up into the wavelengths that produce colors. In this way, bodies reflect their colors. The molecules that produce this reflection are pigments. For example, the color of a green apple is related to the pigment molecules that constitute the apple. Only green is reflected from among the rays that strike these pigments, since the pigments absorb the other colors. Since the green light is reflected, we see the apple as green. After this stage, the rays reflected by objects must reach our eyes in order to be perceived as color. The light rays that reach the eye must first pass through the cornea, then the pupil and the lens to arrive at the retina. The perception of color begins in the cone cells in the retina. There is a group of three main cone cells that react to particular shades of light. These are classed as the blue, green, and red cone cells. The cone cells convert these bits of color information into nerve impulses through the pigments they contain. Next, nerve cells connected to these cone cells transmit these nerve impulses to a specific area in the brain. The place where the colorful world we view all our lives is formed is this area in the brain. <laughs> 